All right, everybody, here we go. That'll do us. Let's see if we can't push this back just a little bit. There we go. How's everybody doing today? Happy hump day. It's Wednesday. I'll just go ahead and just get that out of the way. So, annually, uh, a gentleman, PJ, Pigeon Fly Tying, and I host a fly drive in support of Casting for Recovery. And uh, this is going to be my contribution. I'm tying 28, I don't know, I'm calling them little pink baby minnows. I don't know, unicorn, whatever. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But here we go. From, this, from the top. We're going to start this off on a moonlit hook. This is a ML054 size 8, 1x strong, 2x long. Nice little down eye streamer hook, barbless. Always good to go barbless. Get that tossed in the vise there. All right, before I put my thread on, I need to add some weight. And I am going to be using, um, I guess that would be two hundredths lead wire, 0 .020 or 020. That's two hundredths. And we'll just take some counter wraps. And tuck that tail end here. There we go. Let's helicopter the wire off. I normally don't helicopter uh, fine wire or anything like that. Lead wire, lead free wire. It seems to work just fine. Usually we're adding additional layers. All right, here we go. 140 Denier Dansville. It's 140 Denier. Flat wax thread, white. Take some wraps right behind the eye. And we'll just hold our wire where we want it. Keep the weight, I don't know, about an eye's length behind the eye. Eye, eye. The eyes have it. And we'll just go ahead and trim off that tag end. Hey, what's going on, Steve? We're back at it. Thrown down on a quick live live stream and breaking our thread. That's the way we do it. Wouldn't be a live stream if you didn't break something. We're doing good. Um, it's been a kind of a rough winter. Um, Bitter, bitter cold. There we go. Let's... Come on. There we go. This is my threader. It's just a little uh, blue dental tool, I guess. And for me, it works. Bada boom. All right. We're going to try this whole thread thing again. We'll just wrap right over all that. It happens. Once again, we'll trim that tag end and get that. So right here, right now, we are tying. Um, I don't know. So far, the working title on it is a pink, pink baby minnow with uh, some broken thread. I can tell you, I just snapped it right there on that hook, but we'll. Secure this wire down a little bit more. All right. Boom. Some hot pink, neon pink Congo hair from the Fly Tires Dungeon. That's some good stuff. So... Yeah, it was uh, some bitter, 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 bitter cold temperatures. We got smashed pretty hard with this uh, polar vortex, everyone's calling it. All right, just a small little bit. Less is more kind of deal with this. Um, we'll take our strand. We're going to trim this in half. 
and this is going to be for two flies one and two so we'll just set that off to the side and i'm going to end up you'll see how i trim this all up later so i don't get too fancy with it now divide it i don't know roughly in half i'm going to tie that in on the near side of the hook give it a few wraps just fold that over and take a few more wraps locking that in on the far side so we got the near and the far covered near bar here we go <clears throat> all right next up some h2o twist pearl pink this is a fun pink uh what do you want to call it crystal flash would be another name for it another brand name for it and what I like to do is I got a little corner cut in my bag. And I'll just pull one, two strands out. One, two. All right. Two strands. I'll do my favorite multiply by dividing. Now we got four strands. Cut it in half. Same thing, just like we did on that pink. We're going to lift that up, come all the way around, tie that in about halfway on the near side. We'll just flip that over and make sure that's on the far side. Near and far. And I tied that in just forward of the uh, pink Congo hair. Take a sip of coffee, well deserved. All right, here we go. Some white Congo hair now. And we're gonna take roughly about the same, same portion as before. Yeah, it'll work. Uh, I'm using a lead-free wire. The question was what size lead. I'm using a lead-free wire. It's two, two hundredths of an inch. Two hundredths of an inch, 0 .020, 0 lead-free. Um, these are getting donated out uh, to a bunch of gals for casting for recovery. I don't know where they're going to be fishing exactly um, for their event or in their uh, in the future. So, you know, just to cover all the bases, I know some waters really demand and regulate against uh, lead in the water. So, might as well throw in some lead free. All right, we'll take our thread. We're going to do a reverse tie. Okay, so before this was all I used just for that pink, about that same size, and I'm going to do a fold back. So my portion towards the rear is going to be shorter, and I'm going to line that up roughly with the back end of the hook. Give that a few wraps, and I'm going to wrap towards the bend a little bit. Make sure we're doing all right up there. Take my thread forward once again, because I'm going to come back and I'm going to glue on some eyes. All right, same thing, except we're going to do it underneath. Take our little tuff of Congo here, hold that on the bottom. And we'll just take a couple of wraps just to get our initial placement. It's always good to just take a wrap or two and then back off and just make sure you got everything where you want it and that's where I want it all right so some would whip finish that I'm a lazy fly tire I'm a practical fly tire and I got this uh, Loctite super glue this is the gel control I'm just gonna take a tiniest little dot and add a little dot of glue there and take a couple wraps right into that and that's it too easy I wish I had a different colored background I could throw out there 
Maybe we'll grab that here in just a moment. But we want to fold that towards the rear. Give it a little compression. I got a little bit of glue there, so you got to be careful. All right, now the bottom half, I'm going to split it into two. And just swoop it down and around on either side of the bend, which will get it nice and clean around the tip of the hook. think green or brown I kind of like the green in the background a little less intrusive we'll just slide this over and plop a magnet there you go how's that how's that for fancy boy I could do a green screen on this all right brush this all out for the first time and it almost kind of when it puffs out it almost looks like a little comet you know it's really hard to see with that white on white all right so we got that all puffed out now we got to glue on our eyes we're going to trim this down dramatically to size just wait and see where we cut this down to Take the flat part of my scissors and I'm going to mash down right where I want my eyes. Give myself a nice flat surface. All right, eyes. The eyes have it. We are using a five millimeter silver fish eyes. I did half and half. This is what we got going on. We got half and half. We got half glow in the dark and half are going to be silver. I'm doing 28. Um, so 14 glow-in-the-dark eyes and 14 with silver eyes. So we'll get our eyes ready. It's always good to have your material ready before you start gluing, gluing things away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's why... Here we go. All right, little dab of glue you. Again, I'm using the same Loctite gel control, just the tiniest little dot. Little dab of glue ya. All right, we'll glue on our eye, and I'm kind of favoring it on the top portion of that hook more than the bottom. So it's flush, it's flush with the wire on the bottom and it protrudes just a little bit on the top. We're gonna clean that up. I like it. All right, rotate. Same thing. And there's a little bit of a void right there. Uh, and that's all right, because we're gonna add our eye right there. All right. I like to turn and rotate my vise a little bit. Sorry if it's a little close for the camera, but I got to have it in position to where I can see it. All right, excellent. So what I like to do sometimes, if I'm gluing on eyes and such, if I have a pair of hackle pliers handy, um, sometimes I'll just give that a squeeze with just those hackle pliers. What that does is it keeps the glue off of my fingers and allows me to do what I need to do. All right, time to play with some UV resin. Let's find it. Here we go. Here it is. All right. This is Solar Res. This is the Flex formula. It goes on kind of goopy, and when it cures, it's a little bit flexible contains a little bit of flex and I'm glad I'm doing my systems check I got to use a different flashlight than normal it looks like oh there it is uh, it's always good to have options I've got my I've got my solar res flashlight I've got this new one that my buddy um, 
Norway sent me to give a try and I've got this little pocket man all three are UV but I think so far of the three UV lights solar res has I think the brightest all right let's get a couple drops and we're just gonna goop a little bit between the eyes excellent just a little dab and we'll come in with our bodkin and kind of give that a smear around and get that mixed in with the fibers because this is gonna cure a little goopy not goopy but uh it's not gonna be rigid that's what i like about it so i can just brush that and get the shape of the head i can push the hair out to where I want it that looks pretty good that sucker is pretty hot uh, look how this other UV light focuses you can see the actual LED of it it's crazy Anyways, we'll give that a zap on the top. I like that. And we're going to wash, rinse, and repeat and do the same thing on the bottom. What do you think? That one little, one little dab. There we go. Just kind of shape that to where I want it. Again, I can kind of puff that out if need be. My eye is nice and clear. And we'll give that a zap. So tonight's uh, being Wednesday. Tonight's always a good night. Uh, Project Healing Waters tonight. Um, always uh, excited for that. It's where I got my start, and it's where I will continue to volunteer so long as there's a program for me to volunteer at and if I wasn't near a program I would probably start my own at this point I would find find a way all right let's give this a brush I like that I like the way that shaped out all right we need to trim this down we need to trim this down two two and a half inches where's my this will work. We'll take this to right about two and a half inches or so, more or less. And that's going to be our longest portion. And I'm going to trim up at a diagonal, just like that. And just like they do at the barber shop, or at the beauty shop, I'll just kind of feather that out a little bit. And that's it. Last brush, and she's ready for the water. So again, the reason why I went with that fleck is so I don't interfere with hook gap. I still have all the hook gap available. Some of it gets a little camouflaged, and when these get wet, it really slicks back Little pink, little pink minnow, little silver eyes. Boy, oh boy. I think, uh, I don't know. If I was a fish, I'd hit it. We'll add that to our done pile. So we got six more to go. Six more to go. And I miscounted on one of them. Thought I was short one, so... Here we go. When you have a lot of flies to tie, and you can speed up your process at all by pre-tying in your weight. 
might save you a few minutes. So I started this one, and what happened is I ran out of thread on my bobbin. So we just terminated that there. I just wanted to just wanted to start off on a full clean fly for the live stream, but we'll just knock this one out with our neon pink Congo hair. That's the second half from the uh, first one. Pop that on the sides. I think I did that a little too far back. I'm gonna scooch that forward just a skosh. So we'll un undo that. Yeah, I'm just a little too far back. You wanna bring that forward to right about there, I think. Yeah. I like it. What do you think? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's a pretty easy fly to tie. It's a, it's or a streamer to tie. It's it's super super basic. Um you know, this is one of those that you if you if I really wanted to i could have sat here and portioned out all the all the bits of material that i needed and you could have every little piece of this operation 100 percent staged out and really crank these out but we're in no particular rush i've been working on these for a little while now and have my process honed in Little pink crystal flash on this aside, a little pink crystal flash on that aside. There we go. I like it. That'll work. Come in with our white Congo hair. Just a little tough. We'll multiply by dividing. This will be the full fly top and bottom. We'll save half for later. And you can see how at the end how I trim this up so that you know trying to stagger everything and oh we need to bump our thread forward right behind the eye. Couple of wraps, keep it on top, Go towards the bend. I like it. Move that light out of the way. And the bottom. Couple of turns, get it into position on the bottom. What's really neat, what I think is pretty cool looking at the fly at this kind of stage of the game is, you know, you see this off to the right and I kind of visualize that being, I don't know, it's like the inverse. Pull that, if I pull that, oh, I pulled that all the way out. Sometimes if you pull it, up and down at the same time we can just really lock that in and it pulls pulls the material back away from the eye of the hook but evidently there was just a little bit too much I don't know my own strength there we go this will clean her all up with a little dab of glue ya a little bit of Loctite. Ultra gel, I like the gel. It doesn't run in where you don't want it. And it doesn't, it gives you, oh, hit that camera. It gives you an extra half a beat to work with. Nice and snug. I'm really giving those last few wraps uh, 
a uh, little extra bite of tension. Let's fold the top back. And if you do get a little bit of glue on your super glue on your fingers, just rub them. Just rub them, rub them, rub them, rub them. All right, bottom, we'll take the two pieces, or we'll take the one piece, we'll split it down the middle. We'll see if we can't. Two pieces, and then I come on both sides of the hook and just kind of fold them back and make them one again at the rear. We'll clean this hot mess up. Give her some brushes. For me, this is a relatively small streamer. Um, this is a size eight. You know, it's I usually I'm like a size two, four, six, eight guy. Two, four, six. Get into the aughts. One aught, two aughts, four aught, six aught, eight aught. Oh boy! All right. Flat part of the scissors. We'll give that head a little compression. I'll flatten that down. You could just use a pair of pliers if you wanted, but scissors are handy. The flat part, not all scissors are the same. I couldn't do that uh, with the razors. I just don't have anywhere to, to pinch down. So find a pair of scissors that have a good, a good flat part and give that head a little squeeze. All right, we got our eyes ready. So let's go ahead and glue on these eyes. Just a little dab will do us. And it's literally just enough to wet the wet the surface of it. All right. Here we go. Same on the other side. Just a little dab. You know, I guess that's one of the features I've never really thought to appreciate of the Regal Vice is, you know, how even though it's not a, a rotary vice, I really it doesn't slow me down much. You seem to get by just fine, and I like it. Your time to play with some solar res flex formula. It goes on goopy, and it kind of stays where you want it without becoming a super rock hard surface. Like the bone dry would. If I put a bone dry, the bone dry or just the hard formula, uh, whether it's the thick or the thin, um, once it cures, it's it's rock solid. But this, I want to just keep it just a little bit softer, a little gummier. You know, sometimes I think we put all these hard surfaces on our on our flies. We got to remember these critters we seek. These toothy critters they might be toothier, a little more toothier than others. All right, let's give this a little, one last little puffing position right there. I don't know. Don't want to go out there with a whole bunch of hard bait. Valentine's Day is tomorrow. Happy Valentine's to all the Valentines out there. You know, if I know sometimes on Valentine's Day, some people get to be a little spiteful and this and that. You know, I think it's just another day for everybody to show each other, uh, show them some love. You know, whether you actually have a Valentine or not, it's... A good excuse to be kind to everybody. Call mom, call dad, call grandma. 
you don't have family, phone a friend. Call that person you haven't talked to in a while. I'm sure they would like to hear from you. The unexpected romance from the past. What are you doing? All right, we'll keep that a little, little out there. And I like it. Mm. Set it and forget it. Mm. Take it back to our about two and a half inches or so. Do a diagonal cut. Thin that out just a little bit. We're going to call that one good. Just add water. All right. Next. Wash, rinse, repeat. We got a little bit more time. We got, we'll probably uh, call this the last one for now, for tonight, because I got to make dinner soon before I head off to the VA. It was interesting, because uh, last week we had our project healing waters and or no two weeks ago during that polar vortex the outside air temperature was i want to say negative 40 or negative 50. come on let's grab a hold of that there we go Call this good. Push up against that. Yeah, I counter wrap my lead. Or my lead free wire i really don't know i mean i i think it locks in a little bit tighter that way um i start up front and i just kind of do like a little well it's almost like a sewing machine stitch with that tag end and now when i wrap forward that top part where that tag ends tied in um my thread doesn't go in between the thread wraps and that's that's going nowhere that's where all right, hot pink time, hot pink Congo here. Just a little dabble do us. Sparse is nice. Give that a trim. And this will be good for two. I'll give that the old splitteroo, set that off to the side. And we'll tie that in roughly about halfway. I don't get too wrapped up on fluffing all my material out and brushing it all out prematurely. 
Uh, this Congo hair does a pretty good job at separating uh, at the end. So I just don't, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Pink Crystal Flash will take one, two strands. Gotta trim off the bag. Two strands will multiply by dividing. And that will henceforth be known as four. Four strands of Crystal Flash. That's a big foot long, foot long pieces. So you just gotta take a piece or two out of the bag and that's usually a good amount for whatever fly you're tying. Sometimes we can go a little too, too bananas with our flash. I don't know. Don't tell that to the Creelix. All right. Wash, rinse, repeat with some white. I don't know. Nice little thin amount. This is a brand new, brand new skein of white Congo hair, and we started this operation. We're we're done with this fly. We'll pan pan down and check out the the progress that we've made so far with this operation. It's been a lot of fun. I always enjoy tying for a purpose, tying for a cause, having a reason reason to tie a fly sometimes if you just keep tying flies for tying flies sake for tying flies sake um, you can almost get to a point where you get burnt out and you need a reason to tie a fly my boxes are all full all my all my fly boxes are full I, I could probably not tie another fly for myself and fish comfortably for quite some time uh, I don't know. I do lose quite a bit of flies, so who knows? Um, well, I don't lose them. I just, I leave them places like in trees and under rocks and next to rocks and yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's check it out. A little dab of glue, yeah. Just wrap right into that glue. If you don't have a, the confidence in your super glue to hold that down, I think you need uh, a different, different glue. Because on top of that, I'm adding more glue, and then UV eyes or UV glue resin. All right, we'll split the bottom. That way we get an even amount on either side of the, the bend of the hook at the back end. Find our brush and brush it out. That'll, that'll suffice. All right, up front, take the flat part of our scissors and squish down on our weight. Make that head nice and clear. And now we glue on the eyes. A little dab of glue, don't take much. I like it. I like it. Same on the other side. Just a little dab of glue, yeah? 
Always put your cap back on your glue. No sense of sniffing that for the rest of the afternoon. Make sure your eyes are nice and even, or at least close to even. Our solar res flex. Just a small little blob there. And we'll mix that in with the hair. Get right behind the eye of the hook. This is our this is our final head cement, if you will. And what I'm really focusing in on is between the eyes. I'm just making sure I've got some fluid dynamics and we'll just kind of puff that out where we want it uh, are you talking about the solar res the solar res flex yeah let me turn off my light i i always keep my uv products kind of off to the side and out of the uh direct direct sunlight There we go. So there's the flex, UV flex. And then the glue I like to use is just a Loctite super glue ultra gel. Gel control, ultra gel. I, I haven't found the difference between the gel and ultra gel. And I even have a, another one on standby. So this is just a gel control. 209, not a bad price. Whenever I find it on sale somewhere, I typically end up buying, I don't know, three or four, I don't know, 10 bucks worth or so. And that lasts me quite some time. Only when it's, I, only when the price is right. I mean, you can go out and spend three, five dollars uh, a bottle on this junk and, you know, yeah, you're in a pinch. You'd probably buy it at, a, at your local gas station. Who knows? But... If you keep your eye open, you know, strike up a relationship with your local hardware store. I've got a local local place around me, Handyman's Hardware. Owners and their family are somewhat regulars at our, our VFW. I, well, yeah, I guess one's a pretty good regular. Um, so, you know, hey, they come by and support us. I always like going out and supporting them. And their endeavors and they're just right around the corner so when it goes on sale i'm there i'm there let's try another track all right we are all glued up we're all tied up we need to brush it out I like it. Yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, uh, exactly. It's, I, I do feel very fortunate to have them around. Um, and they are, they are the, the last of the, last of their kind. Handyman's Hardware. Check them out on their. Uh, they got a pretty good, uh, pretty cool website. That gives you a little bio and a little information about the the history history of the hardware store. I always thought that'd be a really cool, really cool gig. Being an owner operator of a small mom and pa hardware store. Kind of nickel, not a nickel and dime, nickel and dime store, dime store or something like that, general store. So there we go. She's going to swim. She's going to swim. All right. So we're going to show you the progress. This is where we're at. 
Uh, these are two, four. These are all done. These are all two, four, six, eight. So this will put us at, this one will go here, and then we'll just have four more to go. Yeah, my one of my favorite hardware stores uh, growing up as a kid, you know, it was that type of joint that everybody who went in there had the understanding that their entire inventory and inventory control system solely depended on you to let them know that something was running low or uh, you were taking the last of it. I mean, it was literally... But the guys, the guys knew exactly where everything and anything was. So, I don't know. All right, everybody. That's going to be it for today. We got a TCB around the house and get ready for Project Healing tonight. So, until next time, happy tying. Tight lines. Peace.